Getting old sucks, but the wonderful world of television is chock full of shows to remind us about those first heartbreaks, awkward gym classes, nosy parents, playground bullies, fashion faux pas, pesky siblings, and every embarrassing thing we did from the age of 13 to 21. Come to think of it, being young sucked too. But if you're keen to relive the good old days, our very own TV editor, Sammy, has compiled a collection of the best young adult series to ever grace the airwaves. Sammy, tell us more about it. Yes, thank you, David. So this week on The CW, there is not one but two series finales of classic YA or young adult series, Riverdale and Nancy Drew. So like David mentioned, thought this would be a great opportunity to visit our YA collection, which houses the best and worst of the teenage experience on screen. I should mention that YA is a teenage audience, usually featuring teenagers, but not limited to that as we are all fans of YA dramas and comedies and the like. So right off the bat, you'll see collections for recently released YA movies and TV, then we have 25 young adult TVs and shows that define the genre, including Veronica Mars, Fresh Prince, Euphoria, Avatar, all very different in genres, but all YA. Then you might ask yourself, but I am not a young adult anymore. Have no fear, because we have YA experiences no matter what decade you were born in, including, including the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, and then the 2000s is my favorite collection of Disney Channel original movies, which I know we've talked about on the show before and is my favorite collection. A few other categories include shows as dramatic as your life feels, lol or lol worthy teen comedies, teen angst but make it sci-fi, shows to stream with the lights on, and teens animated. My personal favorite show in the YA collection has to be Gilmore Girls, which I relive and rewatch every fall relive the chaos and embarrassment that is Rory Gilmore and all of her friends and hijinks. David, Liz, I do believe that you also have some favorites from this collection as well. Please tell. I do. My favorite young adult series is probably not one you would expect, especially since it was canceled after only one season. But trust me, if you want to enjoy one of the best single season shows ever made, go to Netflix right now and watch Teenage Bounty Hunters. The series stars Maddie Phillips and Angelica Bet Bellini as fraternal twin sisters who unexpectedly find themselves moonlighting as bounty hunters under a cranky veteran bounty hunter named Bowser, played by Kadeem Hardison, who you may know best as Dwayne Wade from the show uh, from the 80s and 90s sitcom, A Different World. In typical adult series or young adult series fashion, the show deals with life in high school, controlling parents, sexual discovery, and the struggles of being a young woman in the modern world, but does so with a large dose of very sharply written comedy and a perfect amount of heart. And when this show dropped in August 2020 in one of the most depressing stretches of the pandemic, it was exactly what I needed. The series also includes one of the best TV twists in recent memory, which made it even more heartbreaking when Netflix pulled the plug, despite the fact that it earned a 94% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, despite the cancellation, I still think Teenage Bounty Hunters is worth your time. Sammy, did you watch this? I didn't, but I should mention that it is included in the collection in YA, canceled but not forgotten, alongside a lot of other Netflix <laughs> one season wonders that were canceled too soon. I remember how sad you were, David, when this cancellation came through. I, this this show, I know it's, I know you're saying Teenage Bounty Hunters, like how, how, but it just like filled my heart. It just was so much fun and it, and. I had some one, some of the biggest laughs I've ever had watching TV, watching this series. Their performances, Maddie and Angelica, are so good in this, and so uh, just just perfect comedic timing in in every joke. And Kadeem Hardison's also incredible. Um, I was just so all on board, and 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 also like like I said, maybe it just had to do with just desperately needing something to make me feel good during that portion of the pandemic. But it is really a bummer because Netflix has killed a lot of female-led 
series after one one or two seasons that I really loved, like um, like this and Glow and Warrior Nun and I am not okay with this and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and the Dark Crystal, <laughs> like, and on and on and on. But you know, give us five more seasons of The Witcher, Netflix. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, I I just love this show, and really, honestly, like I know it's hard to watch something you know has been canceled, but if you're looking for just a, a good time and the twist at the end, even though we'll never really get a um, any kind of closure. You know, closure on it it's it's a it's good it's worth it so yeah start that petition bring it back just like they did for ahsoka there were there were there were petitions for the longest time i was in like a a twitter and instagram algorithm that was just nothing but posts about bringing this show back because all i was doing was looking it up i can't believe no one picked it up honestly but and now they've gone on a uh angelica was in um one of um oh what's his name oh my god now it's the the director who's got all the very stylized moonrise kingdom wes anderson Uh, she was in a wes anderson movie um maddie is in i believe gen v the new boys spinoff so they've gone on to to find their places in hollywood and other projects but i'll I'll always have a special place in my heart for Teenage Bounty Hunters. They also have matching Teenage Bounty Hunter um, tattoos. I, why do I know so much about this show? <laughs> I and love the it. stars. Liz, please <laughs> save me and tell us about your favorite young adult series. Well, I mine is not on Netflix, thank goodness, and actually is a season two. So yay for strong female leads. It is the summer I turned pretty on Prime Video. Now, okay, I did not plan on watching this. So this was one of those, my kids have control of the TV, mom watch what we're watching sort of thing because they end up watching everything that I watch um, and was like immediately sucked into this show. And I pretended not to watch and I was kind of like reading my book and, and uh Um, watching the entire time. Um, But this is amazing. So it's a diverse cast, Asian American cast. Um, It's fresh and relevant and modern um, in a way that depicts um, like the American family. Um, And what I loved about it is that it's the main story is about a young girl, they call her Belly, who grows up with um, another family, like her mom's best friend and their kids, and they summer together all of the time at, a, at, you know, at their house with a pool and all of that fun stuff. And so all of a sudden they grew up together until then it just becomes weird, right? So they start to notice each other. They're at that age where they start to notice each other and they all kind of start have, have more than one of them having feelings for one another. So it's messy, right? And trying to navigate all of that. But I think what really caught me is, and David, I laughed when you said that getting old sucks because, yes, I 100% agree. But, um, and I know that being young sucks too, but uh, in a very different way. But it was the whole like middle age wife mom thing that really sucked me in. Those secondary stories for me um, were really great. It was about, you know, marriage, troubled marriage, and being able to co parent and divorce and dating as a middle aged woman. Um, friendships at that age as well. And then um, illnesses and someone, you know, finding out and covering up that they're, they have an illness and navigating all through that too. So I think uh, that underlying those secondary stories, I think is what is most interesting, I think to me, and maybe others would find that as well. But this, this YA genre just has a grip right? They know what they're doing. They, and they do it well. Um, and I'm not embarrassed to say now that I absolutely love this show and excited that season two, um, will be on prime video. And that's what I'm excited to watch. Yeah. I, you don't have to tell, I had a trouble like picking just one YA series for this segment. It was like cruel summer. Do I go with teenage bounty hunters? Do I go with even like, uh, motherland fort salem there's far too many freeform shows i could have picked 
that I'm really like low key into. Um, Sammy, I know you also have a hard time picking just one show that you're interested in and you have a few that you're really obsessed with, right? Yes, I, I do love this genre and I, I love Gilmore Girls so much. I think it shows the good, bad and the ugly of just watching Rory Gilmore age from high school, really early high school, all the way through college. Um, she only gets cringier and more difficult to watch. But in a similar vein as The Summer I Turned Pretty, Liz, there's those secondary stories um, following Lorelai and her relationships and her marriages and divorces, whatever. Um, I think that just really rounds out the whole show and it makes it kind of beyond just YA. There's a lot more layers to it. Um, but like I mentioned, the reason we're even talking about this is because of the series finales of Riverdale and Nancy Drew on the CW this week on the 23rd. These, I feel like, are the biggest of like the recent YA shows. I think right now we think of Riverdale, which the first two seasons are very good. <laughs> Period. Period. Ish. Um, Cannot speak to the rest. I think it may have uh, jumped the shark a little bit, but it has been its own era of kind of the resurgence of YA. And then following right after Nancy Drew, the series finale as well, which I know we have a few fans of, I don't know, on this show, but I think a few of us watch it as well. Um, so lots to check out in the destination and on the CW. Someday someone's going to talk about Riverdale the same way you talk about Gilmore Girls, and it's going to be their... <laughs> The same way people talked about Dawson's Creek. Riverdale is, is their Dawson's Creek. And that's the circle of life, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you can check out all the shows we just talked about and so much more by saying what to watch into your voice remote.